Okay. Hello guys, uh, just running a um, scope test. We have a uh, one ohm resistor, so uh, just using one of these. It's uh, set to 5 ohms. Um, just got a uh, coil wound here. It is this stuff, which is. Uh, No, 18, 18 AWG. And uh, so just going to run a test. 5 ohm on one of these coils. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Okay. Just this so I get the perfect current draw. I draw about 450 oh yeah. Okay, here we Notice here, I'm not completing the magnetic circuit. Keep hitting the rotor like that. So what have I got here? 100. And, no, I've had it up to about 200 millivolts. So we yeah, go, so 200 millivolt there. 200 millivolt at um, five ohms. One coil and one steel. Um, what else can we do? The uh, RPM, RPM, RPM is at uh, 450 million. It to go faster, like because the sun really doesn't influence the um, the current generator or the power. Or sorry, the um, the output that much. That's a little bit. What's more important is the uh, the coil, the steels where you have them. I get the same from using ferrites as I do silicon steel. Well, I mean, that waveform I find fascinating. I've got the coil further away. From the uh, actual... If I move the coil in, back. I get that happening. So you've got those two peaks there. Oops. If I move it away. Just a really weird waveform. Don't quite understand. So you got a that sort of double peak and then that droplet. Let's try another coil. Um, so that's that one. Uh, so now I'm just going to try a. Try one of bog standard. Uh, yeah, here we go. So this is a. Uh, it's for a crossover out of a stereo. Uh, anyway, this one again. Once again, we're doing five ohms. Just 
and steal the fit. Just to use yourselves. Runs on five to six one. I want, it. I want that five one. Anyway, let's have a look at here. So this one, slightly lower gauge. Away from there as well. Different steels, different coils. Uh, that's a 35 millivolts, something like that. Uh, yeah, uh, fascinating to say the least. And then we tried, uh, I tried this, this might not go that well. <laughs> but we'll give it a go anyway. I've got to try to keep um, whatever I'm measuring down here away from the magnet up here so it's not getting influenced by that. It's a bit of a horrible knife. Here we go. Let's test the uh, distance. Oop, okay. too far. Clearance, clearance! <clears throat> Got our resistor and our probe. Try to get that coil close to there as I possibly can. Okay. It's still quite low, isn't it? What's that, 100, 130 millivolts? Oh, yeah, I didn't know it right up. Yeah, it's still Interesting the difference in the waveform, right? And that's probably because I've got essentially three blocks here that not connected. So the um need to wind some more coils obviously um and a proper building rig. I mean Because essentially from what Luke showed, he's using one magnet to get five watts. I mean, admittedly, it's a big magnet, but uh, I'm using six magnets to get one of these sort of numbers there. Um, so a long ways off from, I mean, I know he's putting a lot more power into it as well, but I mean, it seems to be cogging, but it doesn't seem to need necessarily 58 watts to turn the thing. I don't think you can probably stick that on a rotor and turn it a lot easier than uh, 58 watts. It's overkill. Um, and this little pulse motor without the magnets will run it. Mm. Um, without the 
that mean it runs about um, without these? It's about 100, 100 milliamps for about um, 4,500. Like um, up here. So, any suggestions are welcome, but uh, I think I'm going to abandon this particular design and uh, go with something that is more along with uh, Luke's tone. Thanks, guys.